When the war started, I was finishing my high school, entering the uh, studies, and I was, uh, thank you, and I was, uh, uh, I, I, I shared a flat with a Serbian woman and with Croatian woman. And at that time, when I actually never thought about ourselves as Slovenian, Croatian, Serbs, we were just friends. And so uh, when the war started, also this issue of nationality and of religion pumped up. So there, there was, a, I remember the friend of mine, she was Serbian, uh, she said a very strange uh, sentence when we were discussing about the issue in Bosnia. She said, they are Muslims, they are Muslims. And I said, yes, what then? And uh, she said, yes, this is a problem in Europe. And of course, uh, it was a total shock for me, I must admit. After that, I was studying, of course, sociology. I'm specialized in sociology of religion, especially in the last few, let's say, years. I am a very well, um, actually, I'm working a lot about the issue of Muslims in Europe, especially in Slovenia. I'm co-working with Islamic communities of Slovenia to establish an interreligious dialogue, um, peace building, and things like that. So, I was, uh, as I said, I was shocked. And of course, when you do a study in the history, you can see that uh, Muslims are perceived as European other. And it's still, it is, the situation is still like it is. Slovenia is a member of European Union from 2004, and we are the only, at the moment, only European country that still does not have a mosque. We had such a burden to, to you know, build the mosque. And uh, of course now, there, now the contract is there. I hope the mosque will be built in 2017. Uh, but still, as I said, it's such a difficult issue, you know, when you're uh, questioning the issue of religious identity. And uh, of course I was observing and, and studying why is it like it is. It's a collective memory that is uh, the collective memory that is uh, all over repeated about the, uh, uh, the, the memory of, of, through the poetry, through novels and things like that. We are learning in primary schools, in high schools. We're reading novels about Turks, the other, the different, you know, the dirty Dur Turks who came to, to, to take, uh, to, to rob or to kill, to take janissaries and so on. And of course, during the Yugoslavia, I was still, it was still Yugoslavia when I was doing my uh, primary school education. There was uh, this uh, famous poem, Gorski Vienac, from Petar Petrovich Njegos. And there is an uh, interesting topic about searching for poturice, you know, searching for those uh, uh, betrayers, perpetrators of, of uh, uh, Christian blood, let's say, who, uh, who um, um, enter or who took Islam as their religion, and of course they betrayed uh, Slavic uh, uh, blood. Let's put it like that. And of course, this was the ideology that was, and I think still is somehow present in the, uh, in the memory, in the collective memory. And such a mythology is only, as we can say, only a step away from the ideology of genocide, you know? There is a, a sociologist and journalist, Michael Sells, who coined the term Christoslavism. So this is a kind of uh, uh, interrelated system of myths shown slaving Muslims as betrayers of Christian faith and uh, their own nation uh, and so on. So, it, of course, when, when you see something like that, it, it is, uh, it is uh, a part of the identity of, uh, you know, when, when you build this collective memory in that, in that way, of course, somehow you, you understand uh, or not understand, but it, it, is, it is a part of your upbringing, of, of your educational, uh, you know, uh, system. So, uh, of course, I was, I was asking myself what, uh, what could be done, you know, what, what, where should we start? And, of course, education is so important, as we can as we can see. So it's not just about the education, about plurality, interreligious dialogue, uh, uh, multiculturalism, but it's also very important, as we heard already, uh, that uh, uh, the conflict starts in the mind. 
You know, in the mind, that means that, uh, for example, that those who are victims or who were victims in the past can become aggressors or per perpetrators in the future. So it is very important to, to find a solution, how to end this circle, this samsaric circle, you know, to stop, as, as we said, you know, uh, the professor, the, the, the first speaker said it correctly, you know, uh, those who are victims today could be, if circumstances change, could be uh, perpetrators or aggress aggressors uh, in the future. And also, you know, when, when you uh, analyze this uh, Christoslavic mythology, you can see that it is based on the battle on, of Kosovo field, so in 1389. And those were the victims. Victimized identity is alive, you know, and it's, it, it is fueling up with, with this uh, hate speech, with these with this, uh, mythologies. And, and so it, it, is, it is a necessity to, uh, to stop it, as I said. It, it, uh, and how to do it? I mean, of course, there are, other, there are many uh, uh, options. Um, uh, I was uh, recently doing a special research on mindfulness as a tool of conflict transformation. So, as I said, if a conflict starts in the mind, then we should need for a, uh, we should search for a tool that can somehow help to uh, uh, to disengage us from the usual modes of thinking, of reacting to objects of consciousness. Uh, to, to somehow disengage us from these imprint emotions, from these adapted patterns that we have. Uh, so what would be that adapted pattern? Uh, we are victims and we don't know how to react otherly you know, uh, uh, or differently. Or they fight because they don't have any other option. You know, these are these imprinted uh, patterns. So, um, and uh, recently we are doing a project in, uh, in Istanbul with Syrian refugee children, with uh, uh, Syrian refugees. Uh, so uh, it, it is, of course, as I said, you need to start with a very early age in, in uh, primary schools, in kindergartens, you know, with social games to understand how this, uh, you know, this dynamic develops, you know, how, how this is constructed and how you also can, as I said, disengage from these usual modes of thinking, reacting, uh, and uh, that you are not, that you're a process. You know, that these imprinted emotions or these imprinted um, modes are changeable, that you can change them, that you are not, let's say, a victim forever, or that you're not uh, aggressor, but you, you can, you know, you are a process, as I said, in, and it's up to, of course, uh, the, this process uh, that you can step out of these vicious circles. So, uh, of course, um, as I said, it's not an easy way, and I would really be uh, happy to uh, uh, answer your questions regarding the method, uh, but I think uh, there are so many other uh, interesting, probably, questions and answers to be uh, asked uh, to other uh, speakers, so I will give my floor to others and, of course, most welcome to ask, as I said. Thank you very much.